good morning and welcome to this Christian Aid service for 2020. Like all charities, Christian Aid is finding this year especially challenging. Christian Aid Week is a major fundraising time for the work of Christian Aid. As one of the major relief agencies, funds raised through this incoming week have a direct effect on work that can be carried out in the months to come. If you can support Christian Aid, please do. The worship prepared by Christian Aid is intended to allow you to participate. Words of prayers and responses will be on screen. After each scripture reading there is a short interlude for reflection. It is hoped that during these quiet moments you might use the commenting feature on Facebook or the church website to enter your thoughts or reactions to those verses of scripture which catch your attention. It's the kind of interaction with worship that we don't do when we meet in church, but it's so much easier to do in this format. So please, feel free to join in. It will come as no surprise that this time of worship is prepared in light of the coronavirus pandemic. Several weeks ago, we all began washing our hands frequently and thoroughly to help stop the spread of infection. Can you imagine how difficult that is to achieve in places where water is limited and soap <clears throat> is a very scarce commodity? Janet Mackay, our Christian Aid convener, has chosen to include a hand-washing prayer in this service. It might be that each time you wash your hands, you can say that prayer, or a prayer of your own devising, and think on others. Let's approach God then, in the words of a short gathering prayer. Let's join together in our gathering prayer, the words of which will appear on screen. So please, say the words out loud, along with me. Let us pray. God of all the earth, be present with us now, in each of our homes, as we connect together. Build us into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer and Healer. Amen. Janet Mackay now reads for us verses from Psalm number 31. The psalm is a prayer of trust in God, and many of its words might describe the way you feel about things just now. After Janet has read the words of the psalm, we're going to allow a little time of reflection, and you might want to write in the comments on Facebook or on the church website which words or verses from Psalm 31 have stood out for you, the verses that might mean something for you or express the way that you feel about things just now. Let's hear the word of Scripture. Let us hear the word of God. The first reading today comes from Psalms 31, verses 1 to 5 and verses 19 to 24. Let us hear the word of God. A prayer of trust in God. I come to you, Lord, for protection. Never let me be defeated. You are a righteous God. Save me, I pray. Hear me. Save me now. Be my refuge to protect me, my defence to save me. You are my refuge and defence. Guide me and lead me as you have promised. Keep me safe from the trap that has been set for me. Shelter me from danger. I place myself in your care. You will save me, Lord. You are a faithful God. How wonderful are the good things you keep for those who honour you. Everyone knows how good you are, how securely you protect those who trust you. You hide them in the safety of your presence, from the plots of others. In a safe shelter you hide them, 
from the insults of the enemies. Praise the Lord, how wonderfully he showed his love for me when I was surrounded and attacked. I was afraid and thought that he had driven me out of his presence, but he had heard my cry when I called to him for help. Love the Lord, all his faithful people. The Lord protects the faithful, but punishes the proud as they deserve. Be strong, be courageous, all you that hope in the Lord. Let us pray. As we turn on the tap, we turn our hearts toward you, O God. As we wet our hands, renew our thoughts so we might be transformed. As we lather soap between fingers and over all our hands, purge from us all that brings us harm and might harm others. Remove the invisible guilt and shame that so often keeps us from you. As we rinse our hands, we trust in your overflowing grace, making all things new. Amen. The second reading comes from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 14. Jesus, the way to the Father. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told them. Believe in God and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my father's house and I am going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you myself so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way to get there? Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Now that you have known me, he said to them, you will know my Father also. And from now on, you do not know him and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, that is all we need. Jesus answered, for a long time I have been with you all. Yet you do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Why then do you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe, Philip, that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I have spoken to you, Jesus said to his disciples, do not come from me. The Father who remains in me does his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. If not, 
believe because of the things I do. I am telling you the truth. Those who believe in me will do what I do. Yes, they will do even greater things because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask for in my name so that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. Thanks be to God for this reading of his, his most holy word. Christian aid can do no other than gratefully acknowledge all who have delivered and collected Christian aid envelopes by hand over these past 60 plus years. And for all the hands that have made soup for church lunches, poured cups of tea and coffee, made toast for big brekkies, put up posters and bunting advertising events, sorted books and art for sale, and of course counted and returned the money collected. Thank God for the hands that have put love into action. When our own hands and the hands of others have become something of a threat, and when many are no longer experiencing the reassuring touch of a hand on a shoulder, or no longer being comforted by the embrace of a hug, the references to hands in Psalm 31 become particularly poignant. It feels particularly apt to pray with the trust of the psalmist that our times should be in God's hands and also for deliverance from hands that might harm us, including our own. As we wash our hands more carefully and more often, we can pray to God to hold in his care all those who have held hands with, carried and hugged. We can also pray for those who we have never had the opportunity to physically embrace, but who we have reached out to with generous hands, giving what we could through our gifts during many previous Christian aid weeks. The world's poorest people are the most vulnerable in a time of crisis. They are less resilient, have less access to health care and will be less able to weather the economic impact. Already we have seen the panic amongst families in Bangladesh at the thought of major brands cancelling their clothing contracts. The people of Bangladesh 
don't have government schemes to fall back on when jobs disappear. Through the work of Christian Aid, we are offered the opportunity to be more aware of those in underdeveloped countries who live in poverty and that which is our moral and Christian obligation toward them. Yet, it is true that even in the developed world there are those who live in poverty. Some 40 to 50 million people in the United States have no health insurance or access to health care. It goes without saying that they are so very vulnerable at this time. Thanks to your support, Christian Aid has been standing alongside the most vulnerable of peoples for the past 75 years and will continue with them through this crisis and will be with them afterwards. Now more than ever, please show your love for our most vulnerable of neighbours. In these days of isolation, when we have had to retreat to the fortress of our own homes, may we gain a new understanding of God as our fortress, the place of security and safety we turn to in this time of trial. God is not a fortress that barricades, but strengthens and reinforces, enabling us to look out from our our own homes, our places of safety, and think about those who are most vulnerable amongst our neighbours, whether they are near or far, albeit we're having to do that virtually or from a safe distance. There is something refreshingly honest about prayers of lament, like that which we read in Psalm 31. Prayers which tell God how things really are. And this shows that God is interested in our physical suffering and our bodily well-being. That's important to remember these days. The description of the psalmist's symptoms is so very resonant with our current experience. Jesus also turned to the psalms for strength and courage when enduring suffering. It is verse 5 of Psalm 31 that Jesus quotes on the cross, Into your hand I commit my spirit. This verse takes on particular poignancy as we face the reality that coronavirus has and will lead to the end of life for many of our neighbours, near and far. It is into the hands of God that we entrust them for his eternal keeping. Amen. We come together in prayers of intercession prepared for us by Christian Aid. You might wish to join in with the response in this prayer, which is, Hear our prayer. Let's pray together. God, our refuge, we come to you with open hands, some of us with hearts full of questions, some of us bruised by bereavement, some of us fearful of what the future holds, all of us stunned by the events of this year. Draw close to us now in each of our homes as we place our honest questions and hopes into your open, resurrected, yet scarred hands. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With the honesty of the psalmist, the wrestling questions of Job, and the lament of the prophets, we bring to you our questions or our silence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear the cry of our hearts, Lord, silent and aloud, for bereaved neighbours, near and far, Comfort those pained by being absent, and hold close those who are hurting alone. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this season of Easter, 
renew us with resurrection hope that while weeping lingers in the night, joy will come in the morning. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Christian Aid Week Sunday, we pray for and with communities across the world who are most vulnerable to coronavirus. We pray for people living in refugee camps and city slums with limited sanitation facilities, who are unable to wash their hands regularly and have little opportunity to isolate from others. We pray for Christian aid partners working to provide soap and buckets, communicating clear, accurate information, raising the voices of the most vulnerable and ensuring they are kept as safe as possible. God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those of us who are self-isolating, which can sometimes feel like we aren't doing anything, remind us that we are all doing our part and saving lives by staying at home. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for much wisdom and resources for those in local and national authority, for all frontline and key workers here in the United Kingdom and across the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we have applauded to honour them, we clap our hands now in praise of your glorious creation. We applaud you, Lord. And with the hope that the first shoots of another possible world are coming into view. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever. Amen. As our service comes to a close, we join in these words of blessing. May the presence of the Creator refresh you. May the comfort of the Son renew you. May the inspiration of the Spirit restore you to be love in action, even from a distance, in our neighbourhoods, near and far, this day, and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>